Okay, great 12. Um, surely you are still fine. Um, we are going to discuss uh, preparatory examination uh, 2024 business studies uh, paper two. So now the allocated time is two hours uh, with um, marks uh, over 150. Okay, great 12. So now uh, moving on to the next page, we have instructions and information. So now always bear in mind that um, Following of instructions is a uh, part of um, uh, the examination. So now let's quickly uh, go through the given set of instructions. So read the flow instructions carefully before you answer in the, uh, the, the questions. So now instruction number one, this question paper consists of uh, three sections and covers two main topics. So now we have section A, uh, which is compulsory. We have section B uh, that consists of three questions and expectation is to answer only two questions. So now we also have section C, of which this section consists of uh, two questions in the same manner, and the expectation is to answer or attempt only one question. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next instruction, uh, read the instructions for um, each question carefully and take note of what is required. Note that only the answers to the first two uh, questions selected in section B and the answer to the first question selected in section C will be marked. So now, instruction number three, number the answers correctly according to the numbering system used in this uh, question paper. So also no marks will be uh, awarded or allocated for answers that are uh, numbered uh, incorrectly. Okay, right, great talks. So now the next instruction reads as follow. Except where other instructions are given, answers must be written in full sentences. So now the next one, uh, which is instruction number five, use the mark allocation and nature of each question, nature of um, uh, each um, uh, instructions are given and must be written in the uh, full sentences. Okay, right. So now uh, also we have what we have instruction six, uh, where we have sections given, section A, which is uh, question one, uh, uh, 30 marks, and we're expected to spend 20 minutes. And then section B, uh, we have what we have three questions, and we expected to select uh, two questions, of which one question carries uh, 40 marks. So two of them are going to carry 80 marks. Then we're expected to spend 70 minutes. And last um, section, we have section C, uh, where you're supposed to select only one question, consists of 40 marks, and expectation is to spend 30 minutes. Okay, right. So now instruction number seven reads as follow begin the answer to each question on a new page so now most of you guys what i've seen great offs, you fail to follow uh this um uh, particular instruction where uh you you fail to uh start or commence each and every question on a new page okay instruction number eight you may use non-programmable uh calculator and then uh, the last one, write neatly and legibly. Okay, write great talks. So now let's jump on to answering the questions. So now we have section A. So now section A, remember, uh, it is compulsory. So now 1.1, 1 .1, uh, we are now on question one. So now 1.1 1 .1 reads as follow. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the answer and write only letter A to D next to the question numbers 1.1.1 to 1.1.5 in the answer book. An example is given where 1.1.6, 1 .1 uh, you only select a letter D. Okay, right, great talks. So now 1.1.1 1 .1 .1 .1 reads as follows. Chandaga manages uh, systems and produces uh, procedures to ensure the completion of tasks. So this statement refers to uh, management. So now the appropriate answer in this regard is going to be management. Okay, so now moving on to next uh, question, we have 1.1.2. Ronel considered a dash as a vector in her investment uh, decisions, assessing the ease and the speed of um, uh, at which her investment could be converted um, to cash. So now the appropriate answer in this regard is going to be um uh, C, which is um, liquidity. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question. The next question, we have 1.3. So 1.1.3 reads as follows. This uh, principle of insurance is applicable to short-term uh, insurance. So now this is uh, indemnification. 
So our appropriate answer in this regard is going to be A. Okay, right. So now moving on to next uh, question, we have 1.1.4. An obligation to work towards improving the welfare of society is known as um, uh, social responsibility, which is a C is the appropriate answer. Okay, right. So now moving on grade 12, we have 1.1.5. That reads as follows. A senior manager con considers uh, uh, existing alternatives and decides on the best solution. This is known as... Um, uh, decision uh, making. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are done with um uh, section section. Eight. We are done with our question uh one point one. So now let's uh, move on to one point two. Uh, still under the same section. Okay, right. So now one point two uh reads as follow: Complete the following statements by using the words uh, provided in the list below. Write only the words next to the question numbers 1.2.1 to 1.2.5 in the answer book. So now, now inside the, the, the grid, we're given private, nominal posters, privacy, storming people, uh, information planning, personal, personal liability, as well as flyers. So now 1.2.1 reads as follows. The directors of a desk company are jointly and severally liable for all the debts of the company. So now the appropriate answer in this regard is going to be uh, personal liability. Personal. Personal. Liability. Okay. Right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. And the next question uh, reads um, as follows. So now, 1.2.2, uh, Sinandi Traders uses Dash as one of the uh, visual aids uh, to promote the, uh, the vision of the uh, business or the vision of the business. So now the appropriate answer in this regard is going to be a poster. Poster. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.2.3. Uh, uh, Jahan, manufacturers invest in sustainable community programs. So this is uh, known as um, a dash element of the triple bottom line. So the appropriate answer in this regard is going to be people. People. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 1.2.4. A swing, a manager at uh, Delta Manufacturers violated one of his employees' right to dash when he disclosed her personal problems without um, her permission. This is nothing but um, privacy. Privacy? Okay, right. So now let's check 1.2.5. So 1.2.5 reads as follows. Team members come to an agreement and reach a consensus during the stage, during the day stage of our team development. And this stage is a norming stage. This is norming. This is a norming stage. Okay, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3. So now 1.3 reads as follows. Choose a description from column B that matches a term in column A. So write only the letter A to J next to the question numbers 1.3.1 to 1.3.5 in which in, in, in the answer book, uh, an example is given there where you expected only to select a letter, not uh, to write the whole uh, description or the whole um, uh, features. Okay, right. So now column A, we have multimedia presentation, we have fixed deposit, we have cooperatives, we have diversity, we have complainer. So now in column B, we are given a set of our descriptions, functions, characteristics, uh, and the likes. So you should be in the position to understand and grade uh, a, a bigger picture before you can actually jump onto answers. Okay, right. So now let's check 1.3.1. Um, 1.3.1. We we're supposed to check um, any description uh, or function or characteristics or impact that is associated with multimedia presentation. So now if we check, uh, we have what we have um, add special effects 
to make uh, the content uh, interesting for the audience. So it means that now our appropriate answer is going to be I, where it says add special effects to make the content interesting for the audience. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be I. Okay, right, great, 12. Let's move on to 1.3.2, where we have fixed deposit. So now fixed deposit uh, is in line with the interest. So interest is uh, guaranteed regardless of the changes in economic um, uh, climate. So it means that in this regard, our appropriate answer for this um, 1.3.2 is going to be E. Okay, right, great, 12. Now let's move on to 1.3.3. So now where we have cooperatives. So now cooperatives, we check um, the profits. Uh, the profits are actually shared equally among members. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be J. Okay, right. So now let's check um, uh, diversity. So now uh, for diversity, we check businesses and employ people from various cultural backgrounds. So now it means in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be A. Okay, right. So now let's check 1.3.5. We have a complainer. So now a complainer in this regard, uh, you must always listen to his criticism without acknowledging him. So it means that our appropriate answer in this regard is going to be a B. Okay, right, great talks. Now we are done with our section A. So let's quickly move on to uh, section, um, uh, section uh, B. So now moving on to section B, we are we are going to start with um uh, question two. Okay, right. So now uh, we have section B where you are actually uh, given the guidelines to say answer any two questions in this section. So now note uh, clearly indicate the question number of each question that you choose. Uh, then the answer to each question must start on a new page. So now, e.g., or an example. We have question two on a new page, question three on a new page, question four or five on a new page, and the likes. Okay, right. So now, Kritovs, so now let's check our question two, how it does appear. So now question two is in line with business ventures. So now 2.1 uh, reads as follows. Name any three examples of short-term insurance. So now three examples of short-term insurance, it includes... Um, the likes, it includes the likes of, um, the likes of our uh, property insurance, fire, uh, money in transit, theft, and, uh, buckler. So now you're saying that buckleary or, or buckler. So now we are saying that, um, uh, this include, you're saying that it does include, um, uh, the, 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 what it does include, um, the, what the theft, uh, the theft, saying that include, Theft. Theft. Also include fire. And also it does include buckleary. Buglary. And and it's not limited to that. It also includes money in transit, also property insurance. Okay, right. So now let's check um uh, two point uh, two outline the functions of the Johannesburg Security Exchange. So now one of the functions of this uh, Johannesburg uh, Security Exchange is to provide protection for investors, and another one uh, raises primary capital, and the last one encourages um a short term investment. So now we're saying that one of the examples that we have, we're saying that um uh, provides. Provides, provides protection, provides protection, protection for investors, provides protection for investors. Also, we are saying that races. Saying that races primary capital. Primary capital. And lastly, we said that it does encourage. 
encourages short-term investment. Short-term investment. Okay, right grade 12. So now we have uh, we have six marks. So we have two marks for the first point, two marks for the second point, and also two marks for the third point. Okay, right. So now let's check 2.3. So 2.3 reads as follows. Identify the insurance concepts applicable to pit insurers in each statement below. So now if you check the statement below, we have 2.3.1 where it says pit insurers uh, decided to uh, replace uh, damaged assets instead of uh, reimbursing John the insured. So now this is reinstatement. This is reinstatement. Okay, right, great talks. Then let's check 2.3.2. .2. It reads as follows John agreed to pay a certain amount of money up front when he took out an insurance policy. For his business uh, property. So now this is an example of um of um over insurance. Over insurance. Okay, right. So now let's check out 2.4. So 2.4 reads as follows: explain the advantages of using a PowerPoint, a presentation, or a data projector as a visual aid. Okay, right. So now uh, visual A, this uh, PowerPoint, it is very, very easy to combine uh, with sound and video clips. Also, simple uh, clustered slides may capture the interest of the audience. And also, video clips can provide variety and enhance visibility. Okay, we're saying that, saying that, easy. Easy to combine with sound or video clips. So now also we are saying that it is simple. Simple plus that slides may capture may capture the interest May capture the interest of the audience, the interest of the audience. Okay, right. So now also we said that video clips video clips can provide can provide variety can provide variety and enhance and enhance visibility okay right so now we've seen that easy to combine with a sound or video clips and also simple clustered um slide simple clustered slide may capture the interest of the audience and also we're saying that video clips can provide variety and enhance visibility okay great talks so now let's move on to 2.5 so now 2.5 reads as follows Read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow. So, Tapelo Suppliers. Tapelo Suppliers is known for selling quality raw materials to various manufacturers. Tandi, a manager at Tapelo Suppliers, appointed suitable uh, people in the right positions to complete tasks successfully. So, now she also 
understands the importance of personal attitude and effective um, leadership. Okay, right. So now uh, let's check uh, how the questions normally um, appear. Okay, so now it means that now we have landed on 2.5.1, where it says identify uh, the leadership uh, theory used by Tandy and then modify your answer by quoting from the scenario. Remember, whenever the question says call, so the expectation is to take a sentence exactly the way it does appear on the uh, given set of a uh, scenario. You are not expected uh, to take out anything. You are not expected to add anything. So you just take the sentence exactly the way it appears on the scenario. So now we have sentence one where we are saying Tabelo Suppliers is known for selling quality raw materials to various um, uh, manufacturers. And then we have also sentence uh, two. So sentence two says, Tandy manager at Tabelo Suppliers appointed suitable uh, people in the right positions to complete tasks successful. So the, then uh, we have what? We have sentence uh, three, where it says she also understands the importance of personal attitude in effective um, leadership. So now, if you remember, Kritovs, you write, when it says modified and cold, you write the full sentence exactly the way it does appear. So now, our leadership style that is actually being uh, given here is situational uh, leadership style. Situational leadership Situational leadership uh, theory. Situational leadership um, uh, theory or style. So now let's just um, uh, stick to uh, theory. Okay, right. So now if you check there, you're supposed to modify it by quoting from the scenario. So now when you quote from the scenario, you are going to take sentence uh, two. So where sentence two says, Tandy. Tandy. A manager at Tabelo Suppliers appointed suitable uh, people in the right position to complete uh, tasks successfully. So now you write this sentence um, uh, fully, so don't uh, omit anything. Okay, right. So in this regard, you are going to get um, uh, two marks uh, from uh, the theory and one mark um, uh, for, count for quoting uh, straight from the scenario. Okay, right. So now let's check 2.5.2. .2. It reads as follows. Describe the role of personal attitude in uh, successful leadership. So now personal attitude always um, I have positive attitude, uh, which releases uh, leadership uh, potential. And also enthusiasm uh, uh, produces uh, confidence in a, in a leader. And also leader's attitude may influence the success or the failure of the business. I'll come again. So it's saying that um, a positive attitude releases um, uh, leadership potential. And we're also saying that enthusiasm uh, produces uh, confidence in a leader. And also, or lastly, leader's attitude may influence the success or the failure of the business. Okay, right. So now saying that positive attitude Positive attitude. Positive attitude releases. Positive attitude releases. Leadership potential. It releases leadership potential. Okay, right. So now we are also... Uh, saying that you're also saying that enthusiasm enthusiasm produces enthusiasm produces confidence in a leader. right also he said that leaders attitude may influence the success or failure of the business leaders attitude
may influence the success or failure of a business. Okay, leaders' uh, attitude may influence the success or failure of a, a business. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 2.6. It, uh, it, it goes or it's as follow. Discuss any two types of um, benefits paid out by the unemployment insurance fund. So now the benefits are that we have, we have illness benefits as well as our maternity benefits. So now illness benefits is when an employee is temporarily ill and can still get paid uh, their salaries or wages. And also under the maternity benefits is when an employee is going to give birth, uh, but can still get their salaries or wages. Okay, right. We are saying that illness benefit. Illness benefit. So under illness benefit, you're saying that when an employee when an employee is temporary temporary an employee is temporarily ill and can still get paid when an, an, an um, employee is uh, temporarily ill and can still get um, uh, paid. So now we're also saying that we have maternity benefit. Under maternity benefit, uh, we said that when an employee is going to give birth, but can still get um, a paid. When an employee is going to give birth, to give birth, but still get paid. Okay, so it means that in this regard, we have um, uh, these two benefits as uh, examples of um, uh, insurance, uh, what um, unemployment insurance uh, fund. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 2.7. So now 2.7 reads as follow. Advise presenters on areas for improvement in their next uh, presentation. So now what they should actually do is to revise objectives that were not achieved and also use humor appropriately and also always be prepared to update the information relevant. Okay, right? You're saying that use humor appropriately Also, revise, revise objectives, revise objectives that were not achieved, that were not achieved. Okay, right? So now also always, always be prepared. Also always always be prepared. Always be prepared to update. Update the information. Update the information. 
that is relevant. Okay, right. So now we're saying that um, as a presenter, you use humor appropriately, revise objectives that are that way uh, not met. Right, the objectives that way not met, and also always be prepared to update the information are relevant. Okay, right. Great talks. So now we are done with our question two. Let's quickly jump on to question three. So now question three uh, is a business. It's all about um, a business roles. Uh, all about business um, responsibilities or duties. So okay, right. Great talks. So now let's check um, what uh, this um, uh, what question uh, has uh, in store for us. Okay, right. So now number uh, three point uh, one. Uh, says name any two types of unethical business practices. So now the two types of unethical business practices that we can put on a table for discussion uh, is in line with unfair advertising and tax evasion. So you're saying that here we have um, unfair advertising, unfair advertising, and tax evasion. Okay, right click talks. So now let's move on to 3.2. So 3.2 reads as follows. Outline the correct procedure to deal with grievances in the workplace. To deal with grievances in the workplace, you shouldn't insult uh, anyone in the workplace. Know the proper procedures that should always be followed. Don't uh, apply emotions uh, on, on, on what on your uh, grievance. Okay. What you can actually uh, do, uh, you can conceptually uh, decide how to respond to conflict situation and also pay attention to your emotions and how they influence you and also listen, uh, reflect, uh, and also inquire as you express your uh, co co your, your concerns in and what in a uh, what in a organization. Okay, right. So now we're saying that um, make sure that conscientious or conscientiously decide decide how. To respond to conflict, conflict situations, and also saying that pay attention, pay attention. To your emotions, to your emotions, and how they influence you as someone who is having grievances. Okay, also we're saying that listen, listen, then reflect, reflect, then inquire, then inquire. Then inquire, as you express, as you express your concerns, press your concerns, In a non confrontational way. 
confrontational in a non confrontational way okay so now we're saying that uh in order for you to uh brief out your grievances you should always uh consciously decide how to respond to conflict situation and also pay attention to your emotions and how they influence you also listen reflect and inquire as you express your concerns in a non-confrontational way or non-confrontational manner okay right great talks so now let's move on to 3.3 it reads as follows identify the diversity issues addressed by pillar enterprises in each statement below so 3.3.1 reads as follows the management of um, pillar enterprises ensures that peter and jane are treated equally in the workplace so now this this is an indication of um uh, what equity because everyone is uh, treated um, in a uh, what in a in an equal manner okay right so now let's check 3.3.2 uh, it reads as follow they over subsidized meals and um canteen facilities on their um, uh, premises so now this is nothing but um, uh, poverty. So now this is uh, poverty. Okay, right. So now let's check 3.4. 3.4 reads as follows. Explain how businesses can apply accountability as a king code principle for good co corporate governance. Remember, this is in line with ethics and professionalism. So now in short, uh, there must be a regular um, communication between uh, management and stakeholders and also businesses should be accountable for their actions and also uh, the board should ensure that uh, the company's ethics are effectively implemented you're saying that saying that there must be there must be There must be regular communication there must be regular communication regular communication between management and stakeholders between Management and stakeholders. Okay, right. So now also we are saying that, also we are saying that businesses should be accountable for their actions. Businesses. should be accountable for their actions okay lastly you are saying that the board the board should ensure should ensure that the board should ensure that the board should ensure that the company So that the company ethics are effectively implemented. Okay, so now we are saying that 
we are saying that um, for accountability, uh, there must be a regular communication uh, between management and uh, the stakeholders. And also, uh, we are saying that uh, businesses should be accountable for their actions. And also, we are saying that the last point, the board should ensure that the company ethics are effectively implemented. So now we gave what we gave um uh, three points in this um regard. It means that you have um um a six uh, what six marks. Okay, right. So now let's uh, move on to uh question three point uh, uh five. So now question three point five uh reads as follow. Uh read the scenario below and answer the questions uh that follow. So now three point five uh scenario reads as follow. Uh B O A communications, which is uh B C. So BOA Communications has a workforce consisting of uh, some difficult employees. So now the management of BC speaks to these employees privately to avoid distracting other employees. So they also listen to uh, difficult employees but do not agree with them. So now BOA Communications provides guidelines on how employees can uh, improve their behavior. Okay, right. So now... Uh, if you actually check, we have what we have um, uh, sentence one, where we have real communication as um, a workforce consisting of um, some difficult employees. And the second sentence, we have, uh, we have uh, sentence two, where it says that uh, the management of BC speaks to these employees privately to avoid distracting other employees. And then we also have a uh, sentence uh, number three or sentence three where they also listen to difficult employees, but do not agree with them. So now lastly, we have our sentence four, where we say, Boa, our communications provides guidelines on how employees can improve um, their behavior. Okay, right. So now let's check 3.5.1, what it has in store for us. So now quote two ways in which BC deals with our difficult employees in the workplace. Remember, the moment you come across this word that says quote, you are expected to take a sentence exactly the way it appears on a given uh, set of scenario. So now we are going to uh, take uh, two sentences, uh, which are uh, sentence two and um, sentence three. Remember, grade 12, when I've done you yourself, you don't write sent as one, as three, but you write uh, the sentence exactly the way it appears in a scenario, pull of A. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 3.5.2. Uh, discuss other ways in which uh, uh, BC can deal with difficult employees in the workplace. So now, how can um, uh, uh, this BC deal with uh, difficult employees at the workplace? So business uh, should um, uh, what um, uh, attack a problem, not a person. And also businesses should look at the past uh, positions to the underlying interest. So we are saying that businesses... Businesses should attack. Businesses should attack a problem. A problem, not a person. Okay, right. So now the second one, we are saying that businesses, businesses, should look businesses should look at the past decisions to the underlying Businesses should uh, check past positions to the underlying interests. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are saying that um, uh, in order for businesses to deal with our uh, difficult employees, uh, they should um, uh, attack a problem, not a person. And also businesses should look 
at the past positions to the underlying interest. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, uh, 3.6. Uh, um, uh, so now 3.6 uh, reads as follows. Explain the ways in which businesses can grade an environment that stimulates creative thinking in the workplace. Okay, so now uh, for businesses to create an environment that stimulates uh, creative thinking at the workplace, they should always encourage alternative ways of working and also they must encourage staff members to come up with um, a different um, a set of uh, new ideas. Okay, right. So now you're saying that businesses businesses saying that businesses should encourage businesses should encourage ways of working businesses should encourage ways of working and also businesses should encourage encourage staff members come up with a um, different set of uh, new ideas to come up with a uh, different set of new ideas okay right great talks so now we're saying that um businesses should uh, encourage ways of working to uh its employees and also uh businesses uh, should uh, encourage staff members to come up with a different set of um, a new ideas. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 3.7. 3.7 reads as follows. Discuss the advantages of the Delphi technique in solving uh, complex business um, uh, problems. So now, uh, under this, uh, remember, experts are uh, uh, the ones that are normally uh, been invited uh, to uh, solve the problem. So businesses may use a group of experts without bringing them uh, together. And also, information received from experts can be used to solve complex business problems. You are saying that businesses may use a group of experts group of experts without bringing them without bringing them together and also we are saying that information received information received from experts can be can be used to solve be used to solve complex complex business problems problems Okay, so now let's move on to 3.8. So now recommend ways in which businesses could protect the environment and uh, human health in the workplace. So now, now one of the one of the ways is that uh, machines should be serviced or maintained 
regularly. Also educate staff members about the hygiene issues and encourage regular health checks. Also minimize pollution by reusing or reducing uh, recycling. Okay, we are saying that machines, machines should be serviced. Machines should be serviced or maintained. Serviced or maintained regularly. And again, we are saying that educate, educate staff members, educate staff members about hygiene, about hygiene issues. And encourage and encourage regular checks in health issues then lastly we're saying that minimize pollution by reusing or reducing and recycling okay right great talks so now we're saying that ways in which um businesses could uh, protect the environment and human health in the workplace machine or machinery should be serviced or maintained regularly also educate staff members about hygiene issues and encourage um, regular checks in health issues also uh, minimize pollution by reducing or reducing uh and um, recycling as well. Okay, right, great talks. So in this regard, um, we are done with our question uh, question uh, three. Let's now jump on to uh, question four. So now moving on to question four, uh, still remember the expectation is to spend uh, what um, is to spend uh, 70 uh, minutes in section B. It means that um, for each and every question, section B, are you expected to spend a maximum of 35 um, uh, minutes? Uh, maximum of 35 minutes. So it means also overall it's um uh, 70 minutes. Sorry. Okay. So now uh, let's move on to question four. So question four is uh, in line with uh, miscellaneous topics. So now uh, business ventures and business um, roles. So now let's check what uh, question four has in store for us. So 4.1 outline two characteristics um, of a partnership. So now profit under partnership is shared according to partnership agreement and also no legal requirements regarding the name of the uh, business. We are saying that under partnership profits profits are shared according to Profits are shared according to the partnership agreement. Partnership agreement. Okay, right. So now the next one, we are saying that no legal, no legal requirements 
no legal requirements guarded or guarding no required uh, legal requirements regarding regarding the name of the business okay right Kratovs. so now he's saying that um uh, two characteristics uh, under partnership, uh, they are as follow. Profits are shared according to the partnership agreement and also no legal requirements regarding the nature of the, uh, regarding the name of the business. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 4.2, uh, which are reads as follow. Read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow. Uh, Calvin, supermarket, which is CS. So now the owner of our Calvin supermarket insured the business property for six uh, uh, 600000 with um, KBY property insurance. So now the market value of the property was uh, 900000 um, uh, Then uh, a section of the uh, property was damaged by strong storms, uh, costing an amount of 30000 um, uh, repairs or for repairs. So now that is uh, the amount of damage or that is um, the amount of loss. Okay, right. So now uh, 4.2.1 uh, reads as follows. Name the insurance clause that applies to uh, CS in the scenario above. So now the, 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 the clause that uh, applies here is under insurance. This is under insurance. So now let's move on to 4.2.2. Calculate the amount that uh, KBY uh, property insurers will pay CS to cover damages. Then show all um, the calculations. So now if you still remember in order uh, to calculate the clause, uh, then we, are, we have to uh, check what we have to check. Um, we have to check um, uh, the amount in short divided by the uh, value of our uh, insured item and then multiply by the amount of damage or loss. We are saying that amount, amount, in short, divide by value of in short item, value of in short item, then everything multiply by amount of laws okay right so now in this regard so now if you check uh we have a uh, 600 uh, thousand as what 600 thousand as um the amount in short so now we are saying that we are going to say okay we have um 600 thousand divided by 900 thousand multiply by 30000 so our appropriate answer is going to be 20000 okay right so now uh, let's move on to the next question which is 4.3 so 4.3 uh, reads as follow explain how management can contribute to the success and or failure of a public company so now let's check the success side so now success side managed um at least uh by one uh what by one competent highly skilled um uh, director can take the business to the greater heights uh, of making a lot of profits but now in terms of uh, faults or failure large management structure can result in decision making uh taking time okay right so now we are saying that on the side of success success then we're saying that managed, managed at least by one person or by one competent one competent highly 
killed the rector. So now let's check failure large management structure large management structure can result result in decision making Result in decision making taking time. Okay, right, Kratos. So now uh, we are done with um, question 4.3. So now question 4.3 reads as follows Explain how management can contribute to the success and or failure of the uh, public company. So we are saying on the success side, Managed at least by one uh, competent, uh, competent, uh, highly skilled uh, director. So now failure can result where now large management structure uh, can actually result in decision making that is going to uh, take a longer period of time. So now let's check 4.1. It says suggest situations in which the auto uh, critic leadership style can be applied in the workforce remember uh, this type of auto this type of uh, leadership style it's where a manager actually uh only give out gives out a command so now this can actually be applicable when employees are not fully trained and also when dealing with employees who are not cooperative okay right we are saying that when employees when employees are not fully trained are not fully trained and also when dealing with employees and dealing with employees who are not cooperative okay right so now let's move on to the next question, which is in line with um in line with our business roles. So now this question reads as follow: uh, Name two uh, what corporate social investment focus area. So now uh, what uh, corporate social investment focus areas include community, employees, environment, rural development, and the likes. Okay, we are saying that here we have the likes of. We have the likes of um, um, community. Community. Then we have employees. Then we have environment. We have communities, we have environment, then we also have rural development, rural development. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 4.3. Outline ways in which businesses could promote social rights in the workplace. So now businesses can actually promote social rights in the workplace by providing recreational facilities for employees, also allow flexible working hours to enhance our productivity. You're saying that 
This can be applicable when a business provides provide recreational provide recreational provide recreational facilities recreational facilities for employees for employees and also allow flexible allow flexible working hours flexible working hours flexible working hours to enhance enhance productivity to enhance productivity okay right great offs so now we're saying that um for business ways in which our businesses could promote social rights in the workplace is by providing recreational facilities for employees and uh, as well as um also uh to allow flexible working hours to enhance uh, productivity uh, in the workplace. Okay, right. So now let's check 4.7. 4.7 uh, reads as follow. Read the scenario B and answer the questions that follow. Bonga Printers Limited. So now Bonga Printers Limited offers affordable printing services at various outlets. So the employees of um, uh, Bonga Printers Limited always take long lunch breaks, resulting in uh, a decrease in productivity. So now let's check 4.7.1. It reads as follow. Name the unprofessional business practice that is applicable to the scenario above. So now this is nothing but abuse of work time uh, where it comes from a uh, second sentence. So this is abuse 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 of work time abuse of um uh, work time okay right so now let's check 4.7.2 discuss the ways in which professional and responsible ethical and uh, effective business practices should be conducted so now under this regard so mission statement should include the values of equality and also businesses should plan properly and put uh, preventative measures in place and also the business should treat workers with respect by recognizing work well done okay we are saying that we are saying that mission mission statement mission statement should include it should include values of equality and also we are saying that plan properly and put preventative put preventative measures in place in place and lastly send that treat workers Treat workers 
with respect by recognizing by recognizing work done okay so now uh, let's move on to 4.8 uh, so now 4.8 uh, reads um, as follow advise uh, businesses on the steps used in handling conflict in the workplace so now one of the steps is to identify a problem and find out um, uh, the sources of um, uh, the conflict so also give both sides a voice also work through uh, the differences as well as identifying a solution saying that identify the problem find sources of conflict Give both sides a voice and also work through the differences and identify a solution okay so now he's saying that identify the problem find sources of conflict give both sides a voice also work through the differences as well as now identifying a solution okay so now right kratovs so we are done with our uh, question four let's quickly jump on to uh question um i mean section section uh c so now section c uh we, we we actually uh given uh two questions and the expectation is to answer only uh one uh a question okay right so now if we check uh the structure of our business studies paper is very simple whatsoever uh the the bullets that you are given they form part of your body so when now what you must do uh you must uh, only uh come with uh what uh introduction then also uh, you come up with conclusion okay right so now this introduction carries out uh, two marks so now also uh the conclusion carries out uh, uh two marks so now the expectation in this regard is to actually uh under introduction uh you divine uh a weight security or you divine a weight shares so now when we divine a weight shares we're saying that shares uh give investors the opportunity to obtain a part of um uh, ownership of a business so that is why we're saying that uh, whenever you have shares in a particular particular business it means that you you don't uh, own the whole business but you are only owning uh, the part of that um, particular uh, business okay right so now let's check um let's check um uh the one let's check um the the what the the first uh, bullet after our introduction so now here remember we just said uh, you divine our uh, shares uh, that I just um, defined for you, saying that uh, when you talk of these shares, uh, we are saying that shares give investors uh, the opportunity to obtain a part ownership of a business. So now let's check um, or outline the rights of um, preference shareholders. So now remember, uh, we have different uh, classification or different types of um, uh, shareholding. So now these preference uh, shareholders, they are the ones that are mostly preferred that is why they are entitled with a word preference. So now, why are they mostly uh, preferred more than other uh, shareholders? It is because whatsoever the amount that they have contributed in the business is a lot, a lot of money 
than other uh, than other shareholders. So now, when it comes to this um, shareholding, the fact that they have contributed a lot of money, uh, when it comes to the, the re receivement of um, the, the dividends, uh, by the end of the accounting period, uh, them, they, they, they get their fixed uh, returns. They, are, they get their fixed returns. Their returns are not negotiable like ordinary shareholding. Uh, because ordinary shareholding, they only get um, uh, they only get their dividends whenever the business um has actually made um a profit. Okay, right. So now let's check um uh the what the differences between uh simple interest and um uh compound interest. Under simple interest, uh the principal amount remains the same over the entire period of um, investment. But when it comes to compound interest, the principal amount grows with the addition of interest. Surely we are together here, great talks. I'll come again. I'm saying that under simple interest, the principal amount remains the same over the entire period of investment. But when it comes to compound interest, the principal amount grows with the addition of um, interest. Remember this principal amount that we are actually referring to. We are referring to the amount that you took from the uh, from banks or from the uh, from the financial providers as a loan. Okay, right. So now let's check um bullet number three, where you are expected to discuss the following types of investment opportunities and um and uh, their risk uh, uh, vectors. Okay, right. So now let's check uh, how best we can how best we can what we can uh, discuss our uh, mutual funds or stock firm. When you talk of mutual funds or stock firm, this is the platform where informal savings scheme in which small uh, group of people normally contribute. So now we have a um, small amount of people who contribute in this uh, particular type of um, informal saving uh, scheme. But now when it comes to uh, the benchers, the benchers uh, it, it's way now. Um, uh, there are some issuing uh, to raise broad capital from the uh, public. So it means that now uh, it is um, issued uh, to raise uh, broad capital from the, the public. Okay, right. So now let's check um, how best we can advise investors on, on the impact of um, government or, or Republic of South African retail savings bonds as a form of um, investment. So now under this uh, particular type of investment, uh, we, one of the impacts is that interest can be received twice a year. And also interest is higher than uh, other fixed um, uh, deposit. So that is why in most cases you see there are a lot of people are flogging in for this uh, particular type of investment uh, then it is actually being provided by, by the government. So now if you still remember, I told you that most people flock in in this one because interest can be received twice a year. Also, interest that has been received in this particular type of uh, investment, it, it seems to be higher than other uh, fixed um, deposit. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the conclusion. So if you still remember, Kratos, when you conclude, you should conclude using your own opinion. You shouldn't uh, conclude using the points that you have used uh, in your what, in your arguments uh, in, a, in, in a body part or the introduction. So now let's conclude. For South African uh, government or South African economy to grow, it means that um, uh, there should be a lot of people who engage into a South African retail uh, savings bond because they will be enjoying uh, interest twice in a row or in a year. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, question six. So now question six uh, reads as follows. Businesses are expected to develop um, corporate social responsibility programs and corporate social investment projects to address some socioeconomic issues uh, such as H HIV or AIDS and, um, and unemployment. So now they are also required to contribute time and effort in improving the well-being of their employees. Okay, right. So now write an essay uh, on corporate social uh, responsibility and corporate social investment in which you, you include the following aspect. So now if you still remember great talks, so the moment we are given uh, this uh, bullets under business studies uh, structure of ESA, it means that these are uh, uh, what are our body, uh, body points. So remember, in our body, uh, you should always write the subheading of each and every question. So what uh, you must actually uh, do here is to come up with uh, the introduction, 
then also conclusion. So now remember under our introduction, we are working for uh, two marks. Also conclusion, we are working for uh, uh, two marks. Okay, right. So now under introduction, you should define our social responsibility. So now social responsibility uh, in this regard can be considered as an ethical viewpoint that says uh, every individual or business has an obligation to benefit society as a whole. So that is our introduction and two marks for that. I'll come again. So you're saying that our introduction uh, reads as follow, uh, an ethical viewpoint that says uh, every individual or business uh, has an obligation to benefit society as a whole, not some uh, particular individuals. Okay, right. So now, Kritovs, so now let's check our, let's check um, our, our corporate um, uh, social responsibility and corporate social investment uh, difference. Okay, right. So now, when we talk of our corporate social responsibility, this is the way a business conducts its operation ethically and morally regarding the use of our human, physical, and financial resources. I'll come again. So we're saying that corporate social responsibility is nothing but the way a business conducts its operation ethically and morally regarding the use of human, physical, and financial uh, resources. Okay, right. So now let's move on to corporate social investment. So now corporate social investment is when investment of our corporate funds or other assets for the primary purpose of achieving social outcomes. So come again, great talks. We are saying that under corporate uh, social investment is where investment of corporate corporate um funds or other assets for the primary purpose of achieving a social outcome okay right so now let's move on to uh the next bullet uh which is um discuss the impact of um uh, corporate social investment on um uh, businesses so now corporate uh, social investment on businesses can actually uh, help businesses to generate a uh, lot of profits and also it can keep uh, businesses uh, in the in in a, in a what in operation for a longer period of time so it means that it can actually bring uh, sustainability in a business and as well as uh, bringing uh, a moral and high motivation uh, to or towards our employees so that they can actually improve their productivity. Okay, right. So now let's actually move on to the next bullet, which is um explain ways in which businesses could deal with uh, HIV or AIDS and unemployment and socioeconomic issues. Okay, right. So now, uh, great talks when it comes to HIV and AIDS. At the workplace, in other uh, for discrimination to be minimal. Because if you still remember, Employment Equity Act says no to discrimination to anyone at the workplace, regardless or in line with um, age, in line with um, uh, uh, gender, in line with uh, language and, and other aspects. And also, if you can actually take into account that South Africa is a very diverse country, that takes into account each and every aspect that... Um, prevent harmonious working relationship between the employees and the employer. So for businesses to deal with HIV and AIDS at the workplace, training program should be offered to the employees so that employees can actually know how to handle or deal with someone at the workplace who is having HIV or AIDS. And also in the same manner, there should be uh, some 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 testing uh, port at the at the workplace where employees can easily go there and do their tests at um, uh, any time convenient to them. And also businesses should make sure that they liaise or partner or work with uh, institutions or organizations that are fully operating uh, towards um, HIV and AIDS. Okay, right. So now, great talks. Let's move on to. Uh, the what? Let's move on to the last uh, uh, bullet and the uh, and uh, this question where it says recommend ways in which businesses could contribute time and effort into improving the well-being of um, employees. In order for businesses to improve the well-being of uh, the employees, the employees they should always offer annual medical assessment to their workers. 
always offer annual medical assessment to their workers and also they must provide recreational uh, facilities to their uh, uh, workers. Why, are, why should they do that? Because the moment they do that, it will actually promote their efforts and also it actually uh, uh, what saves time in terms of production of goods and services. So it means in this regard, even efficiency is going to easily be achieved. And also businesses should um, make sure that um, they, 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 what? They, they, they revise their objectives time and again with the, the employees. Because the moment employees are aware of the objectives of the business and they're also aware of the vision of the business and also they are aware of the mission statement of the business, they'll make sure that they don't go beyond the boundaries of what they're supposed uh, to do in that regard. Okay, right. So now, Kritovs, now as we speak, um, we have landed on our conclusion. So now, remember, conclusion is where now you are expected not to repeat whatsoever information or the points that you have um, included in your body part. So now, in, in conclusion, you can actually say that um, for businesses to grow in South Africa, it means that um, they should pay much attention towards the personal development of their employees so that productivity in the workplace can actually increase. So as a result, a business will be successful. So now, great talks at this, uh, Janja. I would love to say thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed a lesson. So now let's meet um, again in what in next um, lessons. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, Great Talks. Shalom.